hi everyone welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be doing something with watercolor crayons so these are the lyra ones here and i've had these for 19 years my grandson was playing with them last night and he said to me nanny that's 12 years before i was even born <laughs> but okay all right so <laughs> they are amazing um you can see here that I let the kids use them from the tray. They don't even know these techniques that I'm going to show share with you guys because they'll just get wrecked, I think. They'll just be pulling them in and out too much where they're little. So I'm just going to take a couple of colours out and just show you some of the things that you can do with them. There's tons more things. I'm not saying that what I've got here is all of it because there is an awful lot more. So first thing you can do is definitely use watercolour card and just I'm going to use both the colours and I'm going to do two patches like this. And then, so I've got it slightly at an angle onto the card because you can always get more crayon down when you do that. And then just take some water with a brush, like this. And then just paint, I'll try and keep my arm out of the way. Just paint through, like this. Just keep going with the water. And you can see they'll blend beautifully. Let's give it a little clean. You can see there, got a nice vibrant colour and you can even blend them really well in the middle. So you can just go through and blend them all up and add the colours, etc. And you can see they just come out like watercolour. They, that's exactly what they are. They're just a watercolour crayon. Um, another way you can do it is you can just take a damp cloth. I've got microfiber cloth here. And you can just smudge it together and this will give you a much paler look. So you just, because you, you're lifting some of the colour with your cloth. So you can see there you've got a much paler look. So you've got two completely different looks there already. And it's still drying, so it's still got time to bleed, etc. So that's the first two, two things that you can do with it. Um, and then what we'll do is some brush with it. So we'll just take the brush and either one of them. I'll just choose this one for now because it's the closest one. And you just take some water on your brush. And then you just take your pen... I might zoom in a bit, hang on a sec. Take your brush and your pen and you just, so you're tapping, like, you're sort of like letting the brush have the crayon hit the paper and you're just sort of like smooching it around. Get a little bit more water on there so it gets more of a watercolory effect. And you can just smooch that around like that and it gives quite a nice little effect. And you'll see them as they dry how they change as well. That's another way of using it. Um, another one we can do is the um, acetate. So if we take a piece of acetate, which is quite a bendy acetate, flexible, you could use packaging for this, um, and just draw, you can see it's very crayony, onto the acetate. Do some blue as well, like this. And then I'm gonna activate it with water in the brush. So I'm just going to get some water on there and you need quite a bit of water for this one. And it's obviously going to go purple because the two colours are mixing. And you can go back in and add more if you want to. So I've got a nice little colour going on there. And then you just rub the, roll the acetate together just so it's making shapes. You can pat it down and then you can roll your paper as well at an angle. And then just drop that onto the cardstock like that and lift it and then you can move it around as well and get your little splattery pattern going on and the other thing i like to do with this is just leave it for a minute even go back in and smooch this down you'll end up with little spots on there and then you can go on and just add those spots to it so you get like splatter effect on there as well like that and talking of splatter if i just take the pink just getting my brush clean. Swish wash. I had some um, kitchen roll here, but I don't know where it's gone. I'll just use that towel. And then just gather up some colour onto your brush, like this. And then just tap the brush, and you'll get splatters onto your. Um, it's a bit dry. You'll get splatters onto your work from the colour that you're picking up. I'm just literally lifting it off of the crayon, a bit wetter now, and tap the brush look, and you get your splatters 
So loads of the watercolour techniques that we do, you're going to be able to do on here and it's gone everywhere, but never mind. <laughs> it was a little bit uncontrolled, that one. So we've got our splatters on there as well. Um, the other thing that you can do with that is um, the acetate. You can draw onto the acetate again. I'll get another bit, I think, actually. Sorry. Just trying to do it in an order where it won't create mayhem. So you can draw onto your acetate like this. And then you can get some gesso. And you only need a little bit. A little bit's fallen down there. And I've got loads. It's way too much. <clears throat> and take a brush again. Use the same brush. Just going to use the same brush for everything, I think. Grab a little bit of that gesso. Get it going. And then you can see as you mix it, it comes to like a pastely colour. But it's now painty. So what you can do with that is you can paint onto your MDFs and things like that. Your wood. And you've got yourself a coloured gesso base. So obviously depending on what colour you're using. I'll just put that down on so you can see. <clears throat> that it's got a really, really nice texture to it. So that's really cool, isn't it? It's got a nice gesso base there as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So another thing you can do as well, I'm going to get a clean bit of acetate. I'll just move that one out of the way because it's got paint on it. Get another bit of acetate. We'll use blue this time. Hopefully you can see. Let's just get it into camera. And again, I'm just going to cry on onto the acetate. Get some water, which is getting filthy now. <clears throat> Activate it with water to make it into a watercolour. So you can now paint with that. So you can just paint like it was a watercolour paint. And you can add more water and get that true like watercolour wash effect where it fades out. So you can just paint normal as if it was watercolour. But a really cool thing that you can do as well. <coughs> Sorry, I've got asthma today quite badly. Is just take a blending sponge and pick up the rest of it. And then come into the top of your... Oops, that's my mat. I don't want to walk do it on my mat so I'll bring it over here and just come in and you can blend the background it's very subtle because it was quite watered down you can just take your blending tools and give yourself a nice little blend onto the cardstock there and obviously if it was darker let me put some pink on there <coughs> if it was um darker not so much water which I'll do now And then just pick that up off of the acetate or plastic sheet or whatever you're using. And then just come in on that blend. You can see there, it does blend beautifully. I'll lift it up for you to have a better look at. You can see there, got that really nice blend in the corner. So you can blend with it, you can gesso paint with it, you can splatter it, you can use its normal watercolour, you can... Um, just add water to it straight to the paper it's just so cool but there's even more I've got to show you as well so um, you can stencil too so if I just grab a stencil let's go over it's very dry it's not really dry you need it to be completely you see that the paint the paint one came in it's determined to ruin it so <laughs> I just got to get paint off my fingers now I knew that would happen eh sorry guys so again, we're just going to grab some of the acetate. I'll do the blue because I'll do blue over blue. Just to show you that it does work. And just get some water to activate it. You can see it's waxy, so it needs that water to make it a watercolour, so to speak. Add a little bit more colour in there. And you can you just go crayon into the wet. That's okay too. And then we're just going to grab some, well all of it probably, of the paint and just go in with the stencil on the dots like that and lift it up and you can see you've got a very faint dotty look. So obviously if you used another colour, so if I do some pink, it'll stand out a lot more. Let's pick up some pink. Grab the stencil. If 
probably go purple because it's a bit wet but that's quite cool isn't it there you go you can see that it stencils through as well really nice there's another one for you and then after that one we're going to probably um move on to stamping so with stamping here's an image that i've stamped out already just move that to one side and you can just use like um a normal brush i've got a watercolor brush here a water brush here rather i'm just going to grab another bit of camera roll because i'll need to change it so this is what my children grandchildren etc like to do and i'll just show you look at his little card he made granddad his first time ever stamping that is he's used the paints loads of times to color in but that's his first time of stamping and he really loved doing that so bless him he's only six so you just this is how the children do it so what i let them do is i'll, I'll give them the palette of pens and a, and a water brush and then you just go in and you just pick up colors directly from the crayon so you just go in there see the brush is wet so they just pick up colours directly from the crayon. You can mould it around a little bit. And then just colour in your image. So then you can just colour in your image. And make sure you use a watercolour stamp underneath. So if you've got a fine brush, you can definitely go in fine detail. And look how much area you can cover just with that little bit of crayon. And you don't have to go back and get crayon. You can just get more water and drag the colour out so it fades out into the uh, back end of it so to speak so look at that how cool is that so it's really really easy to do really quick to color in your stamps etc another way i really like to use the stamps is to get the sheet and then just do some coloring onto the onto a sheet or um, plastic or tile or glass whatever you've got like this Add some water to activate it. And I'm going to try and keep this pink one side and blue the other. With purple up the middle. So I'm just going to wash my brush. And then take your stamp. So grab your stamp. Now use the same one so you can see. And then just go into it. And you'll see the impression coming underneath. Look. Just go into that. Tap it around. And then stamp it down onto your cardstock. Just give it a moment to transfer. And that's quite a wet one, as you'll see there. You get an impression with the stamp. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and then if you do a second generation, which means you're not doing anything, you just stamp down. Get a second generation like that. And it's much faded, so that's a good background stamp. So if you, if you just want to pick up, say, pretend this is a background stamp. And you can just pick it up and go around with your butterflies and just make a really cool background now i'm just going to bring in this to show you so i colored in the stamp and put it down to the card which we're going to do next but look how different these are so this is the painted on which we're going to do first so paint it on then i spritz what i painted then i spritzed it again and then i spritzed it again so i've got four stamps out of that one um big stamp there so I'm just going to show you how to do that with a little butterfly stamp so we try and keep everything the same I'll just clean that off and then there's a couple of ways of doing it so if you want to you can just color straight onto the stamp with this so we're just I'm not going to do anything particular okay you can see where the colors are going I'm just doing this quickly just to show you what you can do and then we'll add some pink in as well like that oops let's colour it all over i'm going to try and blend it in the middle as well get some pink and purple going on then give it a spritz i'm just going to do this away because i don't want it to go all over the work so now you can see it's got a shine on it so it's becoming wet and then we can just stamp that down let it transfer and look at that you've got a really a much crisper impression there of all the colors now if you want it to be more well let me just show you again spritz it again i'll just do it here spritz it again get it wet and you'll get another stamp out of it and they'll get more and more watery so they get more watery effect which is why it was really nice with that flower one but another really cool thing to do with them is paint directly onto the stamp with your paintbrush 
So I'm going to use a flat brush for this and I'm going to be taking some colours. So let's change it up a little bit. Let's get another piece of card as well because that one's getting a little bit full up. Piece of card. And that bit there we can, you know, you can smoosh all your leftovers as well and pick it up and you've got a really cool background so don't waste anything. So what we can do now is I'm just trying to get you so you can see some of the colours. So if I just get some of these over here. And I'm doing it direct with not too much of a wet brush. Okay, that is a little bit too wet. I'm going to dampen that off. Go back in and get more paint. You need the paint to be thicker, but not dry. So you need to get a paint, but you just need to add something to it, you know. It's not going to just be crayons and nothing happens. So you want quite a dry brush, but enough to be able to pick up colour. I'll get in a yellowy. Go on the back there. And I just think they're really cool, these. Really nice. And so versatile. I mean, you can colour all your dyes in and all your stamps, make backgrounds. They're really cool. And get a little bit more of that yellow. There, that's too wet, as you can see. It's gone everywhere. Let me just dump that off. I'll just put it on kitchen roll. Found the kitchen roll. A bit late. So you need it to be sitting on the top like that. So not too wet, not too dry. Just going to get some more. Not going to make my brush any wetter. There we go. And you could be, this is how I did the flower one. So you can be a lot more precise. I just pop that one down there, let it sit. There you go. It's quite wet, so we could probably get another impression out of that. There you go, you can. And then if you go third, they get lighter, more refined. And then if you spritz it again, you get another impression out of it. So that's a very watery one, which will dry really cool. And then you could stamp black back over it. So you can see, you get lots of different types of impression when you do direct, paint direct to the stamp. So we've done the pooling of the picking it up, etc. So there's quite a few techniques there for you guys. So we've done stamping and we've, and um, this is our other stamping that we did as well that I did earlier where I painted more of the stamp, etc. And then we've got all our little bits here where we did our um, watercolour and our splats and our rubbing it together and you can see they're drying now. This is the gesso and it's completely dry. This is the blending we did with the blending tool and the stencil, splatters, smooshing. So lots of different ways to use these. Don't just think they're just for colouring in. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.